Hello people, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and I wish you a very happy new year. Watch my blow the horn here and I'm blowing the horn as loudly as I can to let people know what time it is so they know what they ought to be doing. Welcome to this presentation. 2024-5784, iPad Goat. Final chapter of the strong delusion. You see, this animation begins in the winter and ends in early spring. Winter, when the calamities begin, and early spring, when the Messiah arrives. This is speaking of the time in which we are in right now. And make no mistake, this animation is Islamic propaganda. And it is here to propagate the strong delusion. You see, those who created this animation want you to believe that the Christian Yeshua is the Islamic Isa, and that the Islamic Isa is the Christian Yeshua. That the bad guy is the good guy, and the good guy is the bad guy. This is the strong delusion. You see, because our brothers and sisters in the East know a lot more about eschatology than our brothers and sisters in the West. So I suggest you listen carefully. Very carefully. We start with this, a reference to the April 8th Great American Solar Eclipse. This date, I believe, is very important in Islamic eschatology. Please take note. Start with the hands of Draco. Pulling the strings of George W. Bush. Letting us know who is in control. Yes, Mr. President, oil, money trumps peace. Iran is held up to opprobrium as well as it should be. But why no outrage at the Saudi funds going to Iraqi insurgency? By Raymond J. Larcy, contributor. Article written back in February 20, 2007. President Bush's press conference last Tuesday was revealing in what was not discussed. Bush was rightfully angry at the support and advanced weaponry being supplied to Shia militias in Iraq. In referencing to the standoff with Iran generally and its nuclear program in particular, he ventured the phrase, money trumps peace, as a rationale for the general lack of progress, insinuating that America's would-be partners on issues regarding Iran are being sidetracked by commercial considerations. Of course, because their god is Draco, or Azazel, the goat-headed fallen angel. Do you not think an angel rides in the whirlwind and directs this storm? This work continues, the story goes on, and an angel still rides the whirlwind and directs this storm, George W. Bush Jr., and who is the angel who directs this storm. After the Declaration of Independence was signed, Virginia statesman John Page wrote to Thomas Jefferson, we know the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Do you not think an angel rides in the whirlwind and directs this storm? 
the original goat, Azazel himself. Much time has passed since Jefferson arrived for his inauguration. The years and changes accumulate. But the themes of this day, he would know. Our nation's grand story of courage and its simple dream of dignity. We are not this story's author who fills time and eternity with his purpose. Yet his purpose is achieved in our duty, and our duty is fulfilled in service to one another. Never tiring, never yielding, never finishing, we renew that purpose today to make our country more just and generous to affirm the dignity of our lives and every life. This work continues. The story goes on. And an angel still rides in the whirlwind and directs this storm. God bless you all. And God bless America. The Devil, Satan, are his titles. Azazel, Behemoth, Baphomet are some of his names. The angel that directs the storm. Azazel, or Baal, Lord, or owner, or possessor, because that's what he does. He possesses. Diabolos. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, livestock. The word there is behemoth. And above every beast of the field, upon my belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Genesis 3, verse 14. Two words used there to describe this creature in the garden, the serpent and behemoth, livestock. Because he is horned and had cloven hooves. The word naukash, describing the serpentine aspect, and the word behemoth, behemoth describing the horned, cloven aspect. Cattle, livestock, wild beast. The angel who directs the storm, behemoth. Livestock, farm animals, with the exception of poultry. In Western countries, the category encompasses primarily cattle, sheep, pigs, goats, horses, donkeys, and mules. The goat headed being the one who directs this storm Enoch 10 verse 12 all the earth has been corrupted by the effects of the teachings of Azazel to him therefore ascribe the whole crime the whole sin the whole iniquity you see, this is the original man of iniquity. When he manifests, he is the man of iniquity, the lawless one. See, this is the spirit behind Isa, the Islamic Jesus. He will be the earthly manifestation of the fly who dwells in the furthest parts of the rivers of Egypt. Behemoth. Isaiah 7 verse 18a, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost parts of the rivers of Egypt. Azazel, Belzebul, Belzebul, Balzebul, Belial, Prince of the Abyss. Enoch 10 verses 6 and 7. Again the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot, cast him into darkness, and opening the desert which is in Dudael, cast him in there, throw upon him herald and pointed stones, covering him with darkness. 
And that is where he still is in his natural form. Enoch 10 verses 8 and 9. There shall he remain forever, cover his face, that he may not see the light. And in the great day of judgment, let him be cast into the fire. And who is cast into the fire on the great day of judgment? The false prophet. Notice he's standing the center of the star, the useful idiot. And why is he standing in the center of the star? You think Azazel is trying to let us know who is in charge of proceedings. Because that is who is in charge. Azazel. He is the one who directs this storm. And he's letting us know. I am in charge. I am in charge. Letting us know who is in charge of proceedings, who controls the goats. Under the first word of the story, get ready to read the story the fast way. Get ready. A girl had a pet goat. Go on. She liked to go running with her pet goat. Go on. And time went by and we got this character, the educated, charming one, also controlled by the master goat. Notice the second great American solar eclipse on his face. Note it. The one who should have turned the virgin daughter of Babylon, USA, away from apostasy, but instead he pushed them further towards it. And he signed the beam at the top of the One World Trade Center. We remember, we rebuild, we come back stronger. Words of rebellion. A throwback to the one who created the first one wall tower, the original rebel. The new Tower of Babel. 
And then their plan, starting with the advent of the rider on the white horse, Donald Trump, who came onto the scene at the same time as the second, first Revelation 12 sign was in the heavens. And he came with the accursed Abraham Accords, which led to judgment, which began with C19, indicated here by the world sign, and then shutdowns, lockdowns, and food shortages, famine, which also brought the war in Ukraine, indicated by the Hermit card. And we're about to transition to the horseman judgments, which will begin the 8th of April. And then the magicians will try to implement their fourth industrial revolution. Then we'll have 10 days of Christian persecution leading to the rapture. And then Satan will be cast out of heaven. This is a timeline on the Economist cover which came out at the end of 2016. I guess this is just a coincidence. It's just a coincidence that all of this would line up exactly to what Yeshua shared with us in the Bible. Millennia ago. You see, these events are exactly the same as described in Revelation 6 and Matthew 24. These are parallel passages. One was from the heavenly perspective because John was in heaven when it was revealed to him. And the other was from the earthly perspective because Yeshua was still on the earth when he revealed it. And it started with the rider on the white horse. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. False Christs, Matthew 24, 4 to 5. Which igni who ignited the Jeremiah 14 footman judgments. And we are going now into the Red Horse War, Revelation 6, 3, 4, Wars, Matthew 24, verse 7, A, Black Horse, Famine, Matthew 24, Famine, Pale Horse, Death, Matthew 24, Death, Martyrdom, Christian Persecution for 10 days, and then the Rapture, and then Worldwide, Chaos. You see, from the Red Horse to the Rapture is referred to as a Tribulation, which takes place before the Rapture but only lasts 10 days. Yeshua warned us of their plans, and their plans have been manifesting. I was pretty shocked. He said, I alone can fix it. Now just think about that for a minute because it's really important. His vision of America is one where we Americans are kind of helpless. We need to be rescued. I can't, I can't really imagine him on a white horse, but. That is exactly who he is. That seems, that seems to be what he's telling us. 
I alone can fix it. I've never heard of an American leader, or at least someone who wants to be an American leader, claiming that he's all we need. That's not a democracy, my friends. As I recall, we had a revolution to make sure we didn't have someone who said, I can fix it alone. And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not, therefore, after them. The king of Jerusalem. King me. The chosen one. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Romans 8 verse 17. Blasphemy. The word became flesh. John 1 14. Make the gospel great again. More blasphemy. The second coming. And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. Luke 21, verse 8. The false Messiah figure. The cult of Trump that has elevated him to the level of Jesus Christ is dangerous, blasphemous, and absolutely fosters an anti-Christian perspective. Article, 7th of August, 2023. What a great honor to be able to introduce for the first time ever anywhere the 45th President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. The seventh manifestation of the beast. The double-headed phoenix. For too long, a small group in our nation's capital has reaped the rewards of government while the people have borne the cost. Please take Gotham from the corrupt! The rich! The oppressors of generations who have kept you down with myths of opportunity. And we give it back to you. The people. We are not merely transferring power from one administration to another or from one party to another, but we are transferring power from Washington, D.C. and giving it back to you, the people. Gotham is yours. None shall interfere. Do as you please. This is your celebration. And this, the United States of America, is your country. Step forward, those who would serve. For an army will be raised. The time for empty talk is over. Now arrives the hour of action. The powerful will be ripped from their decadent nests and cast out into the cold world that we know and endure. We will reinforce old alliances and form new ones and unite the civilized world against radical Islamic terrorism, which we will eradicate completely from the face of the earth. 
courts will be convened. We will bring back our jobs. Spoils will be enjoyed. We will bring back our borders. Blood will be shed. We will bring back our wealth. The police will survive as they learn to serve true justice. We will be protected by the great men and women of our military and law enforcement. This great city! It will endure. Together, we will make America strong again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. Gotham will survive. We will make America great again. The false messiah figure will not make the virgin daughter of Babylon great again. It will all end with death and destruction. The horsemen judgments are upon us. Destruction of the Virgin Daughter of Babylon, USA, Neo Egypt. You see, Yeshua was crucified in the year thirty one AD. You add 2,000 years to 31 AD, it brings you to 2031. Less seven years brings us to 2024. So the time of Jacob's trouble will begin October 2024. See, it all began with the first Shemitah cycle, October 2016 to September 2023. And then came the Yovel, proclaimed September 2023, and will last until October 2024. And then, the time of Jacob's trouble begins October 2024 and will last in October 2023. We are now in the Jubilee, the Yovel, the hallowed or set-apart year. This is the year of transition from the fat cows to the lean cows of Pharaoh's dream. This year ushers us into Daniel's 70th week. You see, it all began with the first Shemitah cycle of Jubilee of Restoration, the year began September 1916 to September 1917, when we had the Balfour Declaration, and then General Allenby took Jerusalem from the Ottoman Empire after 400 years of rule, leading up to the Yovel, the set-apart year, September 1923 to September 1924, where we had the fourth great Aliyah. And this brought us to the second Shemitah cycle of Jubilee and Restoration, which began September 1966, and lasted till September 1967, when we had the Six-Day War, when Israel took the Golan Heights, Jerusalem, and the Sinai Peninsula, leading up to the Yovel 5734, September 1973 to September 1974, when all the gains that took place in the first year of the Shemitah were consolidated and we are uh, we came to the third Shemitah cycle of Jubilee of Restoration which began September 2016 and lasted to September 2017 when the rider on the white horse the false messiah figure proclaimed Jerusalem as the eternal capital of the Jewish people and moved the embassy of the most powerful nation to Jerusalem and then came with his accursed Abraham Accords which ignited the footman judgments C19 food shortages, famine, and war. And then in this year of the Yovel, we will see the rebuilding of the temple. 5784, Yovel, Jubilee, Day of Atonement, 2020, 25th of September, 2023. 
on this channel I proclaim the year of visitation. Because 5784, the Yovel, September 23 to October 24, is the year the Lion of the tribe of Judah visits the earth. Micah 7, verses 1 to 4. The year you will own nothing and you will be happy about it. The year of the Great Reset. And it's interesting that in this year, this scene found manifestation. This educated one who mocks. Notice the sign of the frost, indicating that this is winter time. And what do we find? Barack Obama spreads holiday cheer with surprise visit to pre-K classrooms. Hi everybody, I'm Skinny Santa. I love this time of year, the former president said as he arrived at Parkside Academy to read a story to children and pass out gifts by people staff. Published December the 13th, 2023. Notice the star on the wall beside him. Another indication as to who is in charge of proceedings who is in charge of the ceremonies they are carrying out the rituals because that's exactly what this was a ritual what did he do that was very important he was the what he was the president Wonderful lights and everything. All right, is everybody ready for everybody ready yeah. for the story? Yeah. Okay, you guys ready for the story back then? Yeah. Okay, this story is called Santa, Santa Gotta Go. Santa Got to Go. Coincidence, right? Bush, middle of the star. Obama, star, both in classrooms. Azazel is letting you know who is in charge of proceedings. You see, this scene in iPad Go 2 triggers leave the world behind. Here, Azazel, Behemoth, Baphomet also letting you know who is in charge of proceedings. Baal. You can't say it, but you know it's true. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. It is an honor to be here at my last, and perhaps the last, White House Correspondents' Day. <laughs> you all look great. The end of the Republic has never looked better. The end of the Republic has never looked better. The end of the Republic has never looked better. So, the proceedings have begun. Here, Israel, sitting in the middle of the symbol of the April 8th uh, so Great American Solar Eclipse. Above her head, the rabbit and to the left, the stag with the deer on the wall, an indication as to what time it is and what events are about to take place. Israel holding the apple of God's eye, the land of Israel. It's all about to begin. And here darkness falls, perhaps an indication that we have entered winter. The spotlight is upon Israel, and exactly now the spotlight is upon Israel. The stag, an indication as to the events that are about to take place. The rabbit, an indication as to the year the events take place. 
all of this in an anim animation done and published in 2012, iPad Pill 2. The Year of the Rabbit, 2023. They're telling us these events begin in the Year of the Rabbit. And the stag, a reference to the Netflix movie Leave the World Behind with Barack Obama as an executive producer, I believe. And they're basically telling us that the events of Leave the World Behind are about to take place. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agenteur, the agents of the Illuminati, between the political Zionists and the leaders of Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to f defend themselves against the world minority of rev revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirit will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. A letter written by Albert Pike to his friend Marzini describing the plans of the Illuminati, the Masons, the ones who are now carrying out their plans. Interesting, isn't it? That everything spoken here we find manifesting in the real world. They want to bring about a bloody turmoil. All right, let's take a look at how the last 12 hours have unfolded. Beginning at 3.30 GMT, Hamas started its military operation, firing thousands of rockets into Israel. An hour and a half later, fighters from Hamas's armed wing, the Qassam Brigades, crossed into southern Israel by land and air. With the attack underway, Hamas announced the start of what it called Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. In the hours since fighting began, videos started to emerge of Israeli soldiers being taken captive by Hamas fighters. And just after 6 GMT footage showed fighting in and around the southern Israeli town of Zderot. One showed fighters taking over a police station. Four and a half hours after the first barrage of rocket fire from Gaza, Israel declared war, launching Operation Iron Swords in response. Judah's walls have been breached, 7th of October, 2023. Judah is now at war with Hamas. The spotlight is on Israel to divide Yehovah's land. Judah to divide Yehovah's land. And by the looks of it, she will do so close to the second great American solar eclipse which takes place on the 8th of April 2024 this 
Israeli military says the war with Hamas will last into the end of 2024 as Israeli forces expand their mission to defeat Hamas. Israeli warplanes struck urban refugee camps this weekend as ground forces push deeper into southern Gaza. ABC's Britt Klenet reports tonight from Israel. Tonight, Israeli forces releasing video of heavy fighting in Gaza as the Israeli military says it expects the war to last the entirety of 2024. The goals of the war require a prolonged war, says IDF spokesperson Daniel Hagari, adding that some of the reservists will return home this week for time off, he says, to give them strength for a sustainable fight. His comments coming after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel's war against Hamas will last many more months. 8,000 terrorists have been taken out, according to Netanyahu. We continue to fight until all the objectives of the war are completed, he says, above all, the elimination of Hamas and the release of all our abductees. Tonight, Israeli President Isaac Herzog issuing a New Year's plea to world leaders in 10 different languages to demand and work for the immediate, unconditional release of 133 hostages, he says, remain in Gaza. Netanyahu also vowing to take back control of Gaza's border with Egypt, saying any other arrangement would not ensure the demilitarization that Israel is after, a policy the Biden administration rejected this morning in an interview with Al Whit Johnson. We don't support any reoccupation of Gaza. What we do support is some sort of post-conflict governance in Gaza that meets the aspirations of the Palestinian people. And we believe that a reformed and revamped Palestinian authority is probably the best way to get at that. Tonight, more fierce fighting in Gaza as the IDF expands its operations further south. Gazans praying over the bodies of their lost loved ones. The death toll now at more than 21,800, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. Trucks of aid rolling in, thousands lining up for food. The situation is tragic, says Nua Daha, who is one of the hundreds of thousands of displaced people in Gaza. We don't have drinking water, we don't have food. There's been more exchanges of fire at the Israel-Lebanon border, Iran-backed militant group Hezbollah, with a warning that Israel is in no position to force it away from the border or let the displaced Israeli residents return to northern Israel. This all adding to fears of a wider regional escalation in this war. Remember this, Gutierrez calls for UN quartet-led Israeli-Palestinian peace process back in February 2021. You see, they have been putting pressure on Israel for a while to agree to divide Yehovah's land. This is the goal of the enemy, because he knows once this happens, all hell will break loose. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were four horns. And I said to the angel who talked with me, What are these? So he answered me, These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Zechariah 1, verses 18 and 19. The four horns, the four powers. The four horns, the quartet. Established in 2002, the Quartet consists of the United Nations, the European Union, the United States, and Russia. Its mandate is to help mediate Middle East peace negotiations and to support Palestinian economic development and institution building. The Four Horns, the Four Powers of the Nations, who scatter Israel. The mandate of the Office of the Quartet is to increase Palestinian economic and institutional development and empowerment as a support towards achieving a two-state solution, the dividing of Yehovah's land, the apple of his eye. Which doesn't make Yehovah too pleased. But I am very angry with the other nations that now enjoy peace and security. I was only a little angry with my people, but the nations inflicted harm on them far beyond my intentions. Zechariah 1 verse 15 saith the Lord. 
Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen, the four horsemen. And I said, What are these coming to do? So he said, These are the horns that scatter Judah, so that no one could lift up his head. But the craftsmen are coming to terrify them, to cast out the horns of the nations that lifted up their horns against the land of Judah, to scatter it. Zechariah 1, verses 20 and 21. Because that is exactly what the quartet want to do. They wish to scatter the Lord's people whilst the Lord is trying to gather them. And for this, the nations will pay a price. A very heavy price. Workmen, craftsmen, the word there is mason, artificer, skillful to destroy warriors. Could the Lord have been telling us that the four horsemen of the apocalypse would be the work of the masons? Zechariah 1 verses 18 to 21. The four horns versus the four craftsmen. On the 23rd of March 2021, the Quartet met virtually and warned Israel and the Palestinians to refrain from unilateral actions that will make the two-state solution more difficult to achieve. In addition, the Biden administration has come out in full support of the two-state solution. This, I believe, marked the beginning of the end of the Gentile nations. Yehovah is not too pleased because they wish to divide his land. So, the pressure is on Israel, and the pressure is mounting. At the same time, the unsanitary conditions in shelters and severe shortages of food and water are leading to increases in respiratory infections, scabies, jaundice, and diarrhea. Everything I just described represents an unprecedented situation that led to my unprecedented decision to invoke Article 99, urging the members of the Security Council to press to avert a humanitarian catastrophe and appealing for a humanitarian ceasefire to be declared. Mr. President, we are all aware that Israel began its military operations in response to the brutal terror attacks unleashed by Hamas and other Palestinian armed groups on 7 October. I unreservedly condemn those attacks, and I'm appalled by the reports of sexual violence. There is no possible justification for deliberately killing some 1,200 1, people, including 33 children, injuring thousands more, and taking hundreds of hostages. Some 130 hostages are still held captive, and I call for their immediate and unconditional release as well as their humane treatment and visits from the international community of the Red Cross until they are freed. At the same time, the brutality perpetrated by Hamas can never justify the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. And while indiscriminate rocket fire by Hamas into Israel and the use of civilians as human shields are in contravention with the laws of war, such conduct does not absolve Israel on its own violations. International humanitarian law includes the duty to protect civilians and to comply with the principles of distinction, proportionality, and precaution. The laws of war also demand that civilians' essential needs must be met, including by facilitating the unimpeded delivery of humanitarian relief. International humanitarian law cannot be applied selectively. It is binding on all parties equally at all times, and the obligation to observe it does not depend on reciprocity. Mr. President, the people of Gaza are looking into the abyss. The international community must do everything possible to end their ordeal. I urge the Council to spare no effort to push for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire for the protection of civilians and for the urgent delivery of life-saving aid. 
while we deal with the current crisis, we cannot lose sight of the only viable possibility for a peaceful future, a two-state solution on the basis of United Nations resolutions and international law, with Israel and Palestine living side by side in peace and security. This is vital for Israelis, Palestinians, and for the international peace and security. The eyes of the world and the eyes of history are watching. It's time to act, and I thank you. The head of the CIA jetted to Europe for talks with Israeli and Qatari officials on Monday, sounding out the potential for a deal on a new ceasefire and the release of hostages in Gaza as the United States Defense Secretary spoke to Israeli military leaders about scaling back major combat operations against Hamas. Still, there was no sign that a shift in the war was imminent after more than two months of devastating bombardment and fighting. Fierce battles raged in northern Gaza where residents said rescue workers were searching for the dead and the living under buildings flattened by Israeli strikes. Pressure is growing as France, the United Kingdom and Germany, some of Israel's closest allies, joined global calls for a ceasefire over the weekend. Israeli protesters have demanded the government relaunch talks with Hamas on releasing more hostages after three were mistakenly killed by Israeli troops while waving a white flag. US officials have repeatedly expressed concern about the large number of civilian deaths in Gaza, but after talks with Israeli officials on Monday, US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said, this is Israel's operation. I'm not here to dictate timelines or terms. The US has vetoed calls for a ceasefire at the United Nations and has rushed munitions to Israel. The UN Security Council delayed to Tuesday a vote on an Arab-sponsored resolution calling for a halt to hostilities to allow unhindered access to humanitarian aid. Diplomats said negotiations were taking place to get the US to abstain or vote yes on the resolution. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has insisted that Israel will keep fighting until it ends Hamas rule in Gaza crushes its formidable military capabilities and frees hostages still held in Gaza since the deadly October 7th attack inside Israel that ignited this whole war. Militants killed some 1,200 people and abducted 240 others in this attack. The war has now killed more than 19,000 Palestinians and demolished much of the north, turning it into a moonscape. Some 1.9 million Palestinians, nearly 85% of Gaza's population, have fled their homes, with most packing into UN-run shelters and tent camps in the southern part of the besieged territory. In an apparent sign that talks on a hostage deal were growing more serious, CIA Director William Burns met in Warsaw with the head of Israel's Mossad intelligence agency and the Prime Minister of Qatar, a US official said. It was the first known meeting of the three since the end of a week-long ceasefire in late November, during which some hundred hostages, including a number of foreign nationals, were freed in exchange for the release of around 240 Palestinians held in Israeli prisons. National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby said that the talks were not at a point where another deal could be imminent. Aiming to increase public pressure on the Israeli government, Hamas released a video showing three older Israeli hostages sitting in white t-shirts and pleading for Israel to bring their immediate release. The comments were likely made under duress, but the video signaled Hamas wants to move on to discussions of releasing sick and old men from captivity. Israel has said it wants around 19 women and two children freed first. Hamas says the women include soldiers for whom it is expected to demand a higher price in terms of prison releases. Hamas and other militants are still holding an estimated 129 captives. Hamas has said no more hostages will be released until this war ends. Austin, who arrived in Israel with Joint Chiefs uh, Chairman General C.K. Brown, he said 
that Israeli officials exchange thoughts on how to transition from high intensity operations in Gaza and how to increase the flow of humanitarian aid. And I'm not here to dictate timelines or terms. Our support uh, to Israel's right to defend itself is ironclad, as you've heard me say a number of times, and that's not going to change. On Lebanon, uh, we've been clear that uh, we don't want to see this conflict widen into a, a, a uh, larger war or a regional war, and, uh, and we call upon uh, Hezbollah uh, to make sure that uh, they don't do things that would provoke a wider conflict. American officials have called for targeted operations aimed at killing Hamas leaders, destroying the tunnels and rescuing hostages. US President Joe Biden warned on December 12th that Israel is losing international support because of its indiscriminate bombing. Speaking alongside Austin, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant said only that the war will take time. Now, Israeli ministry spokesperson Daniel Hagari said that the Israeli chief of staff met with Austin and Brown and presented plans for the continuation of the battle in the coming stages. European countries appear to be losing patience. According to them, far too many civilians have been killed in Gaza. This is what the European Union foreign policy chief had posted on X. Under US pressure, Israel provided more precise evacuation instructions earlier in December as troops moved into the southern city of Khan Yunis. Still, casualties have continued to mount and Palestinians say nowhere in Gaza is safe as Israel carries out strikes in all parts of the territory. Israel reopened its main cargo crossing with Gaza to allow more aid in also after a US request. But the amount is less than half of pre-war imports. Even as needs have soared and fighting hinders delivery in many areas, Israel blocked entry of all goods into Gaza soon after the war started and weeks later began allowing a small amount of aid in through Egypt border. Israel's military says 127 of its soldiers have been killed in the Gaza ground offensive. It says it has killed thousands of militants without providing any evidence. Israel blames civilian deaths on Hamas, saying it uses them as human shields. But the military rarely comments on individual strikes. Early on Tuesday in Bahrain, Austin said that the US and other nations have created a new force to protect commercial ships passing through the Red Sea from attacks by Yemen's Houthi rebels. The Houthis say their attacks aim to end Israel's offensive in Gaza and their campaign has prompted a growing list of companies to halt their operations in this major trade route. Israel and Lebanon's Hezbollah have traded fire along the border nearly every day since the war has begun. And in the Israeli-occupied West Bank, over 300 Palestinians have been killed since the start of the war including four overnight during an Israeli military raid in the Farah refugee camp, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. Now, this has been the deadliest year for Palestinians in the West Bank since 2005. Most have been killed during military raids, which often ignite gun battles or during violent demonstrations. So now the international pressure is increasing on Israel to bring in a ceasefire and most of the world hopes that a halt comes in this hostility. So, in this year of the Uvel, Israel will drop the apple. She will cave in to pressure. And agree. Around the time of the second great American solar eclipse, she would agree. The princes of Judah will move the boundaries. Hosea 5 verses 7 to 12. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have begotten strange children. Now shall a month, Kodesh, Strong's H2320, or the new moon, devour them with their portions. Blow ye the cornet in Kibiyah.
and the trumpet in Ramah. Cry aloud at Bet Evan after thee, O Benjamin. Ephraim, the virgin daughter of Babylon, USA, shall be desolate in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel have I made known that which shall surely be. The princes of Judah were like them that remove the bound, moved the boundary stones divided Jehovah's land. Therefore I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment. Therefore will I be unto Ephraim as a moth and to the house of Judah as rottenness. The Lord will chastise the virgin daughter of Babylon USA and Judah, those who now dwell in the land of Israel. The two Benjamins will cave into pressure and agree to a two-state solution, the dividing of Jehovah's land. This is what will bring total, utter chaos. And it will happen around the new moon, which incidentally is the second, the day of the second great American solar eclipse the 8th of April, 2024. Peace and safety, and then sudden destruction. Around the time of the second great American solar eclipse, the Red, the Red Horse War will commence. The al Malhama al Kubra. That is also when the sign of the Son of Man will be apparent in the heavens. Incidentally, this is the end of Ramadan. This is when Matthew 24, verses 7 to 8 will find manifestation. For nation shall rise against nation, the Red Horse and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, black horse, and pestilences, the pale horse, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, the beginning of tribulation, the beginning of travail. Tribulation. Yeshua said tribulation would last ten days and not seven years, after which will come the rapture and coronation. Revelation 2, verse 10. The tribulation is almost upon us. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all the nations whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Jeremiah 30, verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, He will punish Judah and bring an end to all the Gentile nations and that is where we are now the end of the Gentile nations for thus saith the Lord of hosts he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you for he who touches you touches the apple of his eye for surely i will shake my hand against them and they shall become spoil for their servants their slaves then you will know the dividing of jehovah's land And then the lotus emerges. And what is this lotus? Chaos. See, the phoenix is often depicted as rising out of the lotus flower. The lotus represents chaos, rebirth, fire. And out of the fire rises the phoenix. Five seven eight four September twenty twenty three to October twenty twenty four year of chaos and the great reset, the Jubilee.
According to legend, each phoenix lived for 500 years. The only one phoenix lived at a time. Just before its time was up, the phoenix built a nest and set itself on fire. Then a new phoenix would rise from the ashes. Both the Greeks and Egyptians associated the phoenix with the sun, Apollo, Apollyon, the beast that rises out of the sea. Deuteronomy 32 verses 9 and 10 For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. At the dividing of Jehovah's land, chaos will ensue. Two-state solution means the touching of the apple of Hashem's eye. You see, before the Great War, the seventh manifestation of the, the Phoenix manifests as Donald Trump. And after the Great War, during the time of Jacob's trouble, he will manifest as Imam al-Mahdi or Immortan Joe, Apollyon, the King of the Abyss. So, when they agree to the dividing of Jehovah's land, That is when sudden destruction comes. As this scene shows, Obama in trepidation because he knows what the dividing of the apple will bring. It will bring the beginning of the end. So the demise of the virgin daughter of Babylon begins in the winter as we pan out. Psalm 23 The world was about to enter a time of great darkness. Great upheaval. The world is about to enter the valley of the shadow of death. Symbolized by the flag torn apart. at the dividing of Jehovah's land. The demise of the virgin daughter will begin in earnest, as referenced here by the Twin Towers, the 9-11 event. Of course, being orchestrated by Le Fond Bleu, the fallen ones. And then here we have a reference to Osama bin Laden. at the lunar eclipse the rise of the memory of Bin Laden
which takes place around the winter time. And what do we find? Move towards call to global jihad, the war of Gog of Magog, marked by the eclipse, the 14th of October 2023, a day before Hamas calls for International Day of Rage, 13th of October 2023. Bin Laden's anti-Semitic letter to America goes viral on TikTok amid Israel-Hamas war. A resurrection of the memory of Bin Laden. Identifying with Osama bin Laden, for me, it's the same as identifying with Hitler or with the gas chambers in the Holocaust that murdered six million Jews. Let me explain. In the past few days, there's a new trend in social media, and especially in TikTok, that is talking about a letter to America. I just read Osama bin Laden's letter to America. Osama bin Laden's letter to America. Letter to America. Letter to America. This is a letter that Osama bin Laden, the head of Al-Qaeda, that carried out the most famous terror attack in the world against the United States of the Twin Tower. I'm talking about the September 11 attacks that killed more than 3,000 civilians in New York City. So in this letter, that was translated recently in a British newspaper. Osama bin Laden is stating the reasons why he carried out this attack and justifying it to the world. This does not shock me that uh, this extreme radical terrorist will justify his acts. But what shocked me was that we see young Americans and other young people around the world that are justifying his acts and claiming that his actions made sense and were reasonable. Of course that he added that one of his reasons for carrying out the September 11 attacks against the United States was Israel and the Jewish people so-called occupying the land of Israel. Guys, does this make any sense to you? Well, it doesn't make any sense to me. Why would Americans, young people, Western, will justify a terrorist like Bin Laden that carried out a terror attack against 3,000 American civilians in the 9-11 acts? And why would they trust his word claiming that Israel is the reason for these attacks and for all the evil that is going on around the world? This is clearly a spirit of deception of the evil. So connecting all of this to what is happening in Israel, Hamas carries the same ideology as Al-Qaeda and as ISIS, and that ideology is responsible for the September 11 terror attacks in New York City, for the evil that carried out the terror attack and blew up the train in Madrid in 2004, the terror attack on the 7th of July 2005 in London that blew up the Boston Marathon in the United States in 2013. We as believers have an important role to share the truth. So I urge all of you to open your Bible, read it, pray, and ask God to tell you the truth of what is happening in this region and in the world. And after you do that, please act. Act by telling your friends, by sharing these videos and others so that people will know really what is happening in Israel, in the world. And most importantly, join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. In this scene, all the events taking place in the world with the attacks on, on ships in the Red Sea were moving towards a time when oil supplies will dwindle. 
Our entire economic system has been predicated on more and more oil that is roughly the same affordability every year. That is about to change right now. Our culture is energy blind. We think that technology and money are what really powers society. Technology is effectively machines powered by energy. It's really a measure of this fossil pixie dust that we're powering all of our machinery around the world. Once that starts to decline in a permanent way, it changes everything. Pushing world oil production higher is ending, and I think fourth quarter of 2018 will be the peak in world oil production. And if it's not, it'll be the first half of 2024. And I'm pretty confident about that. We are not going to prepare as a society for what's coming. We are not going to stop using carbon to slow climate change. We are going to hit a wall, and then we're going to have to respond. Humans have had more energy in our global society every single year the last 150 years. We, we feel that that's a natural law that that's going to continue to increase, and it's not. And then we come to this scene, which I believe was a reference to the second great American solar eclipse, because the lights go out above the Statue of Liberty. And then her arm breaks off a symbol of the fall and a reference to the second great American solar eclipse, I believe, which is when this event will take place that will unleash the red horse. FBI director warned of rise in terror threats against Americans, potential copycat attacks on U.S. soil, published October the 15th, 2023. A reference to another 9-11 ideology or political or social goal is probably the best definition I would use. Okay. In media interviews, she have repeatedly spoken about the potential for threats posed by lone wolves in the wake of the Hamas terrorist attack on Israel. Is it fair for the American people to interpret this as you or the FBI are not concerned at all with a coordinated attack by foreign terrorists on, American so on Americans here on U.S. soil? Uh, no, that would not be how they should interpret it. That's why I said we cannot and do not discount it. Uh, it is true that over the last several years, and I think Director Abizade said something similar in her opening statement, that we went through a period where the traditional structured foreign terrorist organization threat in the U.S. subsided some in favor of this inspired, ISIS-inspired, let's say, attack. That's passed. But that, while that threat hasn't gone away, to be clear, that threat has not gone away, what has now increased is the greater possibility of one of these foreign terrorist organizations uh, directing an attack uh, in the United States. We haven't seen evidence that it's actually happening yet, but what we have seen is, and I listed them off in my opening remarks, one terrorist organization after another calling for attacks. Uh, and so we should we, wake up. It is a time to be concerned. Yeah. Uh, we are in a dangerous period. So the Office of Intelligence and Anal Anal Analysis at the Department of Homeland Security issued a report last month warning that foreign terrorist organizations are looking to capitalize on the ability to easily enter the United States at our southern border. So, Director Ray, is the FBI able to track all threats and prevent these individuals from conducting an attack on U.S. soil? I couldn't say that we were able to detect all individuals. Um, with the, the people that we know about, as Secretary Rumsfeld uh, used to say, the known known, we're quite good at together with our partners. But it is the unknown unknown uh, that I worry about quite a bit. So, Director Ray, can you say that we do not have either individual foreign terrorists or terror cells affiliated with foreign groups currently operating in the United States? Well, we're not, we're not tracking that. But uh, again, I come point back to what it is. The gaps in our intelligence are real. Um, and it's something that we have concerns about. So, Director Ray, so what would you, how would you, what would you say right now to the American public? Because, like in my state, I've got a significant Jewish population. They're scared to go to synagogue, Chabad. They're scared to send their kids to uh, day schools. So, but not, it's not just them. Um, it's you know other individuals. Like my daughters called me and said, should they be sending their kids to school? What would you tell Americans right now about the threat today as compared to before? This is not a time for panic, but it is a time for vigilance. Uh, we shouldn't stop conducting our daily lives, going to schools, houses of worship, uh, and so forth. 
but we should be vigilant. Uh, you often hear the expression, if you see something, say something. Uh, that's never been more true uh, than now, and that's probably partly why the American people are reporting more tips and leads to us, and we're pursuing those threats and leads as vigorously and responsibly as we can. Thank you. And then this brings us to the movie Leave the World Behind, based on the novel by Roman Alam, which basically tells us of the demise of Babylon, Virgin Daughter of Babylon, USA, Neo Egypt. You see, because in order for the Jews to depart from Neo Egypt, Virgin Daughter of Babylon, chaos must come. And that is what the sign on the walls telling us the iPad Go 2 animation. And we're about to enter a time where the events, the movie Leave the World Behind, will take place. The events describing the demise of the Virgin Daughter of Babylon, USA. As this scene the manifestation of this scene is telling us. As Azel is telling us to brace ourselves. Because this scene in iPad Go 2 triggers the events of Leave the World Behind. Leave the world behind to the pet goats is what the believers will do this year. The sheep the sheep will leave the world behind and the children of Yehovah will flee Neo-Egypt, Neo-Babylon which is what was ref referenced in this movie The White Lion The White Lion was an English privateer operating under a Dutch literary mark which brought the first Africans to the English colony of Virginia in 1619 a year before the arrival of the Mayflower in New England Though the African captives were sold as indentured servants the event is regarded as the start of African slavery in the colonial history of the United States You see, the person who created this movie wants you to see United States as Neo-Egypt because they keep reference in slavery. And what is the link? Of course, Neo-Egypt also enslaved Yehovah's people. The reference is to Egypt. Ancient Egypt, New Egypt, Neo-Egypt, Virgin Daughter of Babylon, USA, characterized by slavery and brutality and after 400 years comes liberation Neo-Egypt USA just like ancient Egypt 1619 to 2019 was 400 years and then judgment began with C19 You see, we had the seven years of plenty from September 2016 to September 2023. As we can see in this Economist magazine cover from May 2022. The coming food catastrophe. We are now in the Yovel, the Jubilee year of transition, September 2023 to October 2024. We are transitioning from the fat cows to the lean cows. The seven-year time of Jacob's trouble will commence October 2024 and last until October 2031. All referenced by our friends at The Economist. 
See, we have the seven years of abundance, September 2016 to September 2023. We are now in the year of transition, the Yovel, 5784, which will lead us to the year of fam years of famine from October 2024 to September 2031. We are moving from Gimel, abundance, to Dalet, famine, lack. Just as it was in the days of old, during the time of Joseph. And in this year of the Jubilee, the year of the Yovel, 5784, 2024, will come the end of Galus Edom, the end of the exile. Because God's people are going home. The greater exodus is about to commence. Thank you very much for listening to me. We have very little time. If you have not given your life over to Yeshua, I pray you do so right now. I look forward to seeing you at the next installment. Until then, I remain your faithful watchman, blowing the horn as loud as I can. And I am out. <laughs>